So uh, while I'm waiting for the uh, guitar stuff to dry out here, I thought a quick update on some additions to the workbench. Um, so I briefly mentioned this, the Hantec scope before. Um, I haven't had a lot of time to play with it yet. Um, one, but one of the things I was keen to understand is the quality of the leads that come with it. So I finally got hold of a, an audio an AF uh, function generator so this will do up to 20 meg sine square and triangle um, it's pretty basic which is all I ever really need uh, so I was doing some tests um, wasn't overly impressed with the quality of the leads that came with the Antec if I'm honest so I got up my old uh, leads that I used to use many moons ago on the Tektronics way better uh, signal quality uh, using these guys. So I reckon the um, the clips that the leads that came with the hand tech will probably uh, get put in the storage. Uh, the other thing that happened on one of them was when I was plugging it into the BNC connector here and you have to push it forward to make it lock um, this front plastic collar just literally came off. I don't know if it was this one or the other one <laughs> but you know, I was just squeezing it on there and the plastic collar went forward, but it didn't <laughs> lock on. So they may have scrimped a little bit on the leads, we'll see. Um, on the scope project, uh, my replacement transistors arrived today. Um, and so at this point I have to give a major shout out to uh, one of my subscribers, AM Station Engineer, who has been so helpful. Uh, offline helping me out with this even to the point of recruiting some of his uh, colleagues who are expert on this stuff um, so definitely have a plan um, but to be absolutely sure I've ordered up a few more components that surround these um, <clears throat> just to make sure that I'm gonna have if you like very high quality low tolerance resistors around these guys and there's a couple of zener diodes as well that need to be um, spot on so I'm taking no chances I got a couple of zeners on order so hopefully in a few days they'll arrive and I can get back to repairing the scope um, so yeah I'm really pleased with that because uh, yeah it's looking like um, oh yeah the other thing I ordered up is some sockets for these transistors um, because the circuit board I'm sure a lot of you guys know what these early 70s type circuit boards are like the tracks on them are not very robust um, and so you only get so many chances to remove and replace a component before the track starts lifting off the board so in case I end up going around this a couple of times uh, transistor sockets as also recommended by AM station engineer so uh, which is an excellent idea so there we go um, two projects on the go at the same time so um, oh the other little workshop project I have is I've ordered up a I've been meaning to set up an overhead camera because I think as a lot of folks I, uh, I know like Art uh, Hollingsworth and Bob Anderson have them I think it's a really cool idea but I don't really have room to put like a uh, one of my DSLRs up over the bench it's just going to forever get in my way so I've ordered up one of those little small guys and uh, hopefully when that arrives we'll give that a shot and see if we ca can improve the quality of the productions Okay guys, so I have managed to scan in these large drawings, um, so I have them in electronic form. Um, it's not perfect, uh, but it's hopefully good enough to use. Um, so this is essentially the channel 1 Y amplifier section. And you guys will probably remember from previous videos that up to this point right here, and its corresponding point right here, we have good signal so from the input up to this point we're good from here it branches off in two directions um, off through this channel which is essentially takes it off the board uh, and goes off to the display and then it comes down through this leg here which is in theory coupling it to the trigger amplifier so 
the problem area then would seem to be um, how this section couples to the subsequent section. So the focus has been on TR60, this transistor right here, TR59, these two resistors, 241 and 218, these two diodes, two 10 volt zeners, um, this capacitor here, C56, and also these two resistors and this electrolytic. So the plan is change all those guys um, and um, then see if that makes a difference. <laughs> so, uh, so that's the plan. I'm going to basically remove all those components, replace them, and then get back in. And hopefully that will make a difference and we'll start to see signal get a little bit further along the chain. So, let's see how we get on. So, uh, I'm going to try and sh I'm going to try and show you the symptoms with the transistors I've taken out. So, this is a replacement 357 BF357K. And when I pop it in the old uh, transistor tester, it comes up as a regular transistor, collector base emitter, etc. with the um, HFE of 419 and whatever whatever. So, as you would expect. Um However, when I put the uh, suspect in here, you will notice there's a diode connecting the emitter and the collector. Um, and that's kind of weird. And it, it ohms up fairly weird as well. So, I'm assuming there's some sort of breakdown here. Uh, and that's the reason... Uh, or at least that's part of the fault. And this is the other one uh, taken out from this push-pull uh, setup. And so that one has the same symptom. So, uh, as I say, I have not seen that before. Usually transistors you expect them to go open or go short. Uh, I haven't seen that particular symptom before. Um, anyway definitely doesn't look right so those are out and we'll put the new ones in um, unfortunately as I suspected there isn't enough room for these transistor sockets that I got the pins are too short and so there are components the component density is so high that there's no room for the uh, for the plastic or <laughs> whatever these are too big I need taller legs uh, not sure what I'm gonna do there we'll see okay so there we go so this is the 6.8 microfarad cap replaced these are the two resistors coming off the 60 volt rail which had overheated and these are the two diodes the two zeners 10 volt zeners which I've replaced this is the thousand picofarad cap that goes across and these are the sockets for the two transistors and I know they're all up in the air at the moment but we're just going to see if this makes a difference or not uh, and hopefully it will um, I don't know what else has been done to this to be honest because I never I just assumed that this is the same circuit on the other side and I assumed it was exactly the same but these transistors are like 2N3904 <laughs> but in the in the manual they're all the same on each side, so uh, yeah. Um, anyway, I've left it with two times BC uh, BF three five seven in here uh, for the time being, and uh, we'll see how we go. And just to make sure I um, maximize the amount of sympathy I get here, <laughs> this is the area that I'm trying to work in, um, and so for the ones here close to the edge, it's it's not fun but it's okay but like one of the transistors is like in here uh, and you just have to keep moving wires out of the way as best you can um, and yeah what an interesting design <laughs> this scope is um, but there's two resistors that are right down in here they look fine they measure fine um, I have replacements if I need them but I thought I'm going to have to get into major dismantling and disconnecting of wires if I need to get in here underneath. Um, so I'm going to leave that for now. 
and then if I need to do that then um, yeah fair enough but uh, we'll leave it for now so I think at this point we will fire the baby up and see if the trigger channel is uh, in any way improved here versus what we've had uh, up to now There, but I got nothing. So after that interesting exercise, all of the components that you can see here on the circuit diagram have been replaced. So this resistor right here, this guy right here, this electrolytic, the two zeners, this cap and the two resistors. I didn't change either of these two resistors because they're in such difficult parts on the circuit board um, and they don't seem to be problematic. Um, however, the end result of all of this is there's still nothing coming out. Um, and also, in this region right here, um, these components are unexpectedly hot. So there's too much current flowing here. So, for any of you guys who are interested, I have marked all of the DC voltages at all of the different points here in this area of the circuit um, to see where we go next. Um, so, to my amateur <laughs> brain, uh, probably I need to start looking at this guy and from here on, because I think what's changed is um, probably because of one of these diodes being uh, replaced is there's current flowing here now which I don't think was flowing before and this is getting warm and so we need to sort all that out the other thing that was odd for me is uh, there seems to be absolutely no voltage drop at all across that resistor which just strikes me as slightly odd all right guys that's where we are um, so uh, yeah we keep at it more to come <laughs>